This video will review stroke volume variation or stroke volume variability and non-invasive cardiac output monitors. This is the most complex video in this series so please pay close attention. The goal of using these values and these monitors is to identify is my patient volume responsive or where are they on the Frank Starling curve? And as we discussed in the last video, central venous pressure or CVP is not a good measure of volume responsiveness. The reason CVP is a poor measure of volume responsiveness is it because it only measures volume or preload as a static variable in one spot. And one data point gives relatively little information on the patient's volume responsiveness. If we can introduce a physiologic change that shifts the volume or preload and measure the cardiac output subsequently, we can decide where the patient is on the Frank Starling curve and whether or not they are volume responsive. And that's the goal of stroke volume variability and non-invasive cardiac monitors, among other maneuvers further discussed in this case. We'll explain how these do this by first reviewing the anatomy. The lungs and heart sit inside the thorax, and we have our pulmonary and systemic circulation. If we deliver a positive pressure breath, increasing the intrathoracic pressure collapses the superior and inferior vena cava, as well as the right atrium, right ventricle, and pulmonary artery. In other words, this decreases the preload volume on the heart. As a result, this transiently decreases left ventricular output volume and decreases cardiac output. If we can conceptualize several positive pressure breaths, we could show that during these positive pressure breaths, we would expect cardiac output to decrease. If, however, the patient has very, very elevated preload pressures and is not volume responsive, that effect will be significantly dampened. So by giving positive pressure breaths, we're making small perturbations to the cardiac preload. And if we can measure cardiac output, we can decide where the patient is on the Frank Starling curve. Unfortunately, cardiac output is hard to measure directly, but there are powerful surrogates. If we have an arterial waveform monitor, we can measure differences in systolic pressure with the assumption that systolic pressure is a surrogate of cardiac output. We could also measure the pulse pressure in its entirety, subtracting the systolic from the diastolic pressure. This, in and of itself, is a good surrogate for cardiac output, and if it varies res with respiration to a high degree, can be very sensitive and specific for a volume responsive patient. Manually doing these calculations, though, can be tedious and inaccurate. Fortunately, there are several devices available in our hospital system that can measure this. The Vigileo or Flow Track Monitor measures these and other proprietary values to determine cardiac output and stroke volume variability. Because this is based on arterial waveform, it requires arterial line placement and is subject to the errors of arterial line placement. Another monitor, the Nikom or Cheetah monitor, uses bioreactants, which sends an electrical signal at a certain frequency through the heart and measures the changes in that frequency as the blood rushes through the aorta from beat to beat. Body habitus, lung volume, or other physiologic parameters have very little effect on this measurement and it can be reliably used. There are, however, several limitations. As we can see here, for a patient on positive pressure ventilation who receives four positive pressure breaths, his arterial waveform changes in the same way with each breath. If, however, the patient has an irregular rhythm with areas of tachycardia and slower areas, each beat has a different preload in the heart because of the time between beats. And so stroke volume variation is not related to the airway pressure and can give a falsely elevated and can give a falsely elevated stroke volume variability. Alternately, if the patient is not receiving regular tidal volume ventilation and has small breaths and large breaths, the large breaths can make bigger changes in the systolic pressure and increase the stroke volume variability beyond the patient's physiologic state. As a summary, stroke volume variability is the beat-to-beat -beat variation in stroke volume, 
But in order to be measured accurately, the patient must be on regular tidal volume ventilation, ideally at 8 cc's per kilogram, but this is only during the test, and the patient must have regular cardiac rhythm. If those two parameters are met, an increase in stroke volume variability of greater than 11 to 13 percent accurately predicts fluid responsiveness. To sum up, stroke volume variability can accurately predict volume responsiveness. However, the patient must be in regular rhythm and have regular tidal volume ventilation. So this technology cannot be applied to patients with irregular arrhythmias or who are not ventilated. There are two devices regularly used in our hospital system to measure this and other physiologic parameters, and these are the Edwards Vigileo or FlowTrack device, which is based on an arterial waveform, and the Cheetah or Nikom device, which is based on bioreactants.